Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source, your source for celeb news. And today we have, hey yo, man, look, 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 look. I think we might got some like Jamie Foxx talk, talking about uh, what Diddy Mike could have done to him, man. We gonna we gonna talk a little bit about that. All right. Uh, well, this is coming from. Well, we gonna we gonna go into it. Okay. Uh, we got uh, OTF Jam man potentially giving up the whole operation, man. Fifty Cent on feeding the wolves, man, because of uh, the OTF Jam situation, man. We gonna tell you a little bit about that, man. DJ Academics talking about um, Dirk might be indicted for way more crimes man uh uh woody on dirt man we also got um uh, uh do we do we really want to cover this one i don't know if we want to cover this one uh, uh let's put this charleston white to the side all right all right um again thanks for tuning in to celeb source show if this is your first time to the channel man be sure to hit that like button if you feel any part of the content we definitely appreciate that that notification bell is waiting for your task to go on give it a tap and that subscribe button is waiting for your subscription man so go on touch that too yo check this out man we gonna set this one off right with YSL Woody, man, who illustrated a very common fear among people that is super relatable, man, okay? And it doesn't matter whether you do drills or your work construction. You could be a nurse or a teacher I'm at, or a banker. I look, I'm mad all of us had the same damn fear. Take a look at what happened to YSL Woody. But the devil came to God and said, if you take everything away from whatever the person he was talking about, he gone. Oh, yeah, Hey, yo, that man was trying to tell you a Bible passage. 12 pulls up behind him. And he, it made the, look, 12 pulled up behind that man. He done forgot the passage. You was talking about Job, sir. That was his name. You was talking about Job, okay? Uh, uh, look, the, look, the one time will definitely have you throw it off, man. You know what I'm saying? That man said, look, that man, that man... <laughs> That man slid down and pulled the seatbelt on him, then hit the position where he started rubbing his chin. You know what I mean? That that let me look normal ad chin rub. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm like, say where all of us do that, okay? That man said, that man said, good gracious. <laughs> He's a good gracious, right? I felt that, man. Uh, thank you, Woody, for letting us see that <laughs> we're all the same, man. Look, you are like us. You are like us, right? Uh, oh, oh, speaking of which, um, the lovely artist that is musical perfection, Rihanna. Rihanna. I, look, I told you I'm in love with Rihanna, okay? <laughs> you like, but she, I, 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 I don't want to hear it, all right? Look, I'm on my Dirk to Wallow. I ain't trying to hear all that, okay? Listen, man, Rihanna came a, a bit late with it, but I guess because, you know, she's moving on island time, she has decided to express her support for Kendrick Lamar doing the Super Bowl, man. Take a, take a listen to what uh, 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 Rihanna had to say. Kendrick Lamar for the Super Bowl. It's a diamond on a on a ring finger, honey. It's, 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 it's meant to be. It's Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar is the one that's supposed to do it right now. He's going to crush it. We should never doubt him. He's an amazing artist. Top tier. He had an incredible year. He actually brought so many people together. It's to be celebrated. That's what culture is. He deserves it. I cannot wait to see it. Kendrick, thank you. I love that, man. Rihanna, look, Rihanna thank Kendrick for accepting the job of doing the Super Bowl, man. That's what I'm talking about. That's what's up right there. <laughs> you like, so uh, Miss F Fenty sounded like she sided with Kendrick in the battle. <laughs> Almost deaf. You know she did. You know what I'm saying? Look, between bro trying to throw shots at her on his song, talking about his intimate relations with her, to, to shots at ASAP, bro seemed like he was really hurt from Miss Robin Rihanna Fenty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, look, hey, look, I, you know, I got a ladies playlist, right? I got a playlist in my, on my joint. It's a ladies playlist. Okay. Rihanna is all over that joint. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause I, I love, I love me some Rihanna. You're like, who else is on your ladies playlist? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Who else I got? I got Cardi. Okay. You know, I love me some Cardi. I got Glorilla, TGIF. That's the only song I got. Okay. That beat is so tough. I got Chun-Li in there. You know what I mean? You know, I, I love me some Ice Spice. Okay. And, uh, I got Beyonce's Flawless and Beyonce's Thick. I don't know what it is about that song. I like that thick song, though. You know what I'm saying? You like no Taylor? Who, t uh, t Taylor Swift? Nah, 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 nah. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. I do love me some Taylor Swift, but she's on my white piece playlist. You know what I'm saying? If I, look, if I put her on the other playlist, my peoples all try to jump out the car. You follow what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, yo, y'all racist, man. T look, Taylor Swift dropped bangers. You follow me? Look, when I want to feel free and white, I play my white people playlist. You know what I'm saying? When I want to feel free, okay? My Kings of Leon and Nirvana and X Ambassadors and Fallout Boy and Eurythmics, okay? Modest Mouse. I get my sister, mother down, Drake, Evanescence. <laughs> hey, look, no, nah, I'm just kidding. Don't, look, don't nobody, don't nobody, don't nobody be listening to no Evanescence. <laughs> 
Anyway, look, 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 by the way, by the way, a lot of people are um, early voting out here, right? Because they believe in the democratic process of voting for your leaders, okay? But some people can only seem to express their will through threats of violence and acts of violence. You're like, who's on your white, white people playlist? Hey, cut it out, okay? People are now burning ballot boxes. They're burning ballot boxes. Sauce, please don't show any images of the fire. You know how YouTube gets. They'll act, they'll act out on us, okay? You can blur out, blur out the fire part, okay? Uh, uh, but people are burning ballot boxes to try to sway the outcome of the damn election, man. The Shade Room posted this. What they pull? Let me see if I can pull it up. Uh-oh. I hope they don't play no, no sound, okay? The, the Shade Room posted, um, come on, can you, can you, I mean, come on, like, can we, are we gonna, are, are we going to, Okay, here we go. It says hundreds of ballots have been destroyed after fires were set to ballot boxes um, across different states. Okay, it says according to KATU TV, smoke was seen rising from a box at a local transit center in Vancouver, Washington, early Monday. When first responders arrived, they found a pile of ballots actively burning. The ballot box last emptied on Sunday morning still contained hundreds of ballots, uh, though only a few were saved from the fire. The fire was reportedly caused by an incendiary device inside the box, which sounds like a bomba, okay? And uh, authorities are investigating it as arson. Another ballot box fire was reported just hours earlier in Portland, Oregon, in a similar incident a few days ago. OK, uh, the box was set on fire in Phoenix, Arizona. All right. So we got Vancouver, Washington, Portland, Oregon and Phoenix, Arizona, battleground state. Listen, um, I looked up like what are the demographics of these places? These places are predominantly white. OK, so it's not like, oh, they're going to go into the black neighborhoods and burning the ballot boxes. But here's what you, you it is noteworthy. OK, those places where these ballot burning boxes are, are happening, they have lately been predominantly liberal leaning locations. OK, liberal leaning locations. So the ballots in the liberal leaning locations have been set on fire. Who could have done that? I wonder. Uh, where we at over here, man? Um, do I want to cover this? No, I don't. I think I should. Should I cover this? I'm a. I'm going to not cover it today. We're not gonna cover this today. We're not gonna cover this today. All right, listen, listen. Let me give you. Um, oh, oh, oh. We, let's give you. Let's go back. Let's swing the camera back over to YSL Woody, okay? Because he has provided his thoughts on Lil Dirk's arrest, and he has. Uh, he has said this on the matter. I want you to take a listen to what he had to say. YSL Woody, take a listen. Y'all want to hear how I feel about the little dirt situation? I ain't saying he guilty. I don't know where the situation is. But if life is going good for you and you come for private, we, we, we risk so much of our freedom, time, and life trying to get where we at. To, to put ourselves in a position where we can take care of our family and our responsibility. The best revenge was for King Von. I'm not saying dirt guilty or anything. But the best revenge that you could have got for King Von was stepping up and taking care of his kids. We ain't nowhere. We we do stupid stuff. Why is we? Why is we out here trying to continue to hurt each other? It's not gonna bring back. It's not gonna. What's done is done. Death is permanent. Like, go get his kids, take his kids, and put his kids in a position where they never had to walk in their daddy's footsteps. Like, I don't understand. Oh, I'm going to make sure I don't wreck because I don't hit like five people cars in the big truck. But, man, I ain't going to lie to y'all, bro. I ain't. It hurt me to see that dirt came so far in life just to end up in his predicament. Y'all rap about these things in y'all sons. Showing that y'all know better and still choose to be foolish. That's how this internet is, is destroying us because we're so caught up and run by trying to maintain the image <laughs> look, did, look did he just say he hit five look, forget it forget it. listen listen look uh, sir uh why your seatbelt ain't on bro you know what i'm saying didn't we just have this issue in the beginning of the video look didn't we just have this problem never, never mind all that listen ysl woody is 100 percent correct okay the best revenge is doing the right thing and taking care of the man's lineage i think that was the best thing okay instead you're aiming to follow street codes and you grab the stick and it triggers a trap in the box and you're and you're boxed in the cage from the inside you, you follow what i'm saying man 
um, the streets is still in the business of tricking folks out of them. You follow me? Uh, and now, because all of these slide for Vaughn, slide for Vaughn, slide for Vaughn uh, uh, comments, bro could potentially be facing the death penalty, which is, which is this is horrific, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, um, uh, DJ Academics. Apparently, the man has put on his detective hat and uh, he's all in on the Dirk arrest situation, man. And um, Ack has a theory that once the feds unseal the indictment, it'll reveal other murders and attempted murders that will fall on Lil Dirk. Take a listen to what DJ Academics had to say. It's a scary, scary place. I'm gonna be honest with you. There's a, there's a thought of mine. There's a thought of mine that says when the feds unseal this indictment, they're gonna have every attempt on Quando Rondo's life, which w there was supposedly like three or four before. They might have oh, F man. they might have FBG cash. They might have other situations. They might bring that that Atlanta joint back that he was co-defendants with Vaughn. Wait, know. this is the it, it, the indictment still still. Well, well, you gotta remember, they gave a complaint. The complaint is more to lock him up. The complaint doesn't have the info on what they believe Dirk did, right? Like, like it says certain shit. But, but uh, you're right. You're right. You're so, right. Because that that because that paperwork. I never been to the fans, so I just didn't know they format of how they how they do paperwork. Because I was looking for like the statements and the interrogations. No, no. And so, all so, that. You know, so like, the indictment that the, was just the warrant. Yeah. So the indictment has it. So so. Once again, I, 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 I'll tell y'all what a, a, so the easiest way for me to explain to you is this, right? Yo, if you driving right now in Cali, um, they pull you over. I don't, I don't know if, um, well, we, we, we isn't illegal, but, but say whatever. They look in the back seat. They see something that resembles a gun, right? Weapons are pretty much legal. Um, say they run your file. They know you don't got no concealed carry. They're going to say, I got probable cause to go search the car or even say or say, or say they, they know something is up and they bring a, a dog sniffer to sniff the car they, they feel like yeah, something's there, the weed. right yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and let's say it's coke let's say it's coke all right now they search the car there's coke there that's a heavy charge they don't need to grand jury you what happens is that how you get charged is that that cop does a complaint and that complaint gets picked up by the DA as a felony. They they, they go beyond. They, they they actually skip the grand jury. Now for yeah. now for things like murder and stuff like that, even if there's a complaint, they'll lock you up. They, but, but just cross their T's and dot their I's, they'll send it back to a grand jury or have a grand jury do it. But in for regular shit with cops, not in federal court. A cop doing a complaint is how you get arrested for 95% of the things. Yeah. In federal court, federal court don't have a bunch of DEA. Like, if you running around and you met, like, a DEA agent, an FBI agent, you're doing something wrong. You're not going to see these people. Like, they, they don't have even the resources just to be at every stop sign or on every road. So what they so do he, is... Go ahead. Yeah, so what they do is they do investigations and when they do investigations they bring it to a grand jury without you even knowing so the, the the majority of how federally you get indicted is through a grand jury the reason why they locked up dirk through a complaint which usually some state shit or like how states do it where a cop pulls you over and you know he smells some stuff or he sees something and then he locks you up the reason why the feds did it is because they thought Dirk was going to run. So the mere fact they locked him up is because they know they're cooking up a grand jury indictment. And that indictment, I think, is not only going to have this murder for hire. It's going to be a superseding indictment. It might be racketeering or it might have other murders and other attempted murders. And that's going to be the big bang. So like in a week or two weeks from now. I don't know how long it's going to take for him to get a Cali. When that indictment is unsealed, we're going to see some shit we've never seen before. They're going to link him to shit. Trust me, that's going to be the big one. Because right now, th this was just to get him locked up. They ain't tell everything they really think he did. 
his mama. He said, there's a thought of mine that says when the feds unseal the document, the indictment, they're going to have every attempt on Quando Rondo's life. There was supposedly like three or four before. They might have FBG cash. They might have other situations. They might even bring back that Atlanta joint back uh, that he was co-defendants with Vaughn. Close quote. And, and, and you know what? Here's the thing, man. Dirk was just sued not too long ago by FBG Duck's mother. OK, and she is under the belief that Dirk and Vaughn both put a 100K bounty on Duck's head and and six men from O Block, O Block said to be affiliated with Dirk and Vaughn, they were convicted earlier this year of killing Duck. They might tie him to a lot of things, okay? And unfortunately, um, I think the way the game plays is if you're an artist, you're a uh, 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 entertainer, you're a celebrity, they stick, they'll stick the leadership <laughs> button onto you, okay? They give you the leadership uh, uh, pin and they pin it onto your shirt. You're the, you're the leader, you're the boss now, okay? You got the bag. And if you got the bag, then you can make things happen. You know what I mean? Um, and that's where we jump into this uh, this situation of of OTF Jam. Okay, um, the belief is that he was the one that had that had the wiretap, and with that wiretap, you know, that's where we're getting information about Dirk potentially putting out a you know murder for hire plot hit type situation. Okay, um, OTF Jam is being said that despite being given 50 racks a car and a home bro did what he did because dirk didn't hold jam down with bond and lawyers when he was arrested again again you heard what i said that because dirk didn't hold him down again that caused jam to turn on him Tell me that ain't crazy. Take a listen to um, DJ Academic speaking on that. I want to ask a question, and, and I, we could have Trenches answer this, and then you could answer it afterwards, Martin. Um, there's the rumor that's going around that there's an individual that goes by the name of OTF Jam, and they're saying that he either he wore a wire. Now, I'm thinking we're in motherfucking 2024. Why wear a wire? You could just put your phone on the table and record a whole motherfucking call. A wire seems bad old school. But what do you think? And, 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 and you know, by the way, Trenches, I heard you speak about Jam. I didn't know. I, I thought Jam was just some guy. You said he's kind of known as a killer. We're not saying he killed nobody, but, but you're saying that's his reputation. Um, what do you think the likelihood is that he's cooperating? And what do you think the likelihood that maybe he recorded Dirk and other people while they were discussing crimes? Well, the likelihood... Um of him doing it, man. He, 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 whether, whether it's Rondo Rondo incident or another incident, he told, he told us, you know, you all know? the members, all the members, all the members told, said, uh, said it that he told. Oh, you know, so, all so, the so that's word on the street. Members, 300 members, they say he told. Oh, so, I don't know, it, but about the wire thing, his people hit me up and said that, um, he wanted to get bonded out and they don't know nothing about no wire, but he did make a threat to a dirt bike. If you want to come in, you know what I'm talking about how you gonna play some basically how you gonna play somebody who be putting in work and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And they took it as a threat and that he told us him. I don't know. I don't know how he got mixed in with the Quando Rondo, but yeah, they say he's told. Wait, so are, are you saying that he made a threat towards Dirk? Like basically yeah. saying, yo, I've been holding you down because I heard you say something about like like his baby mama called Dirk for a lawyer and and Dirk may have like brushed it off and they're like, yo. Yo, you're not supposed to brush off my call when I need something. Like I'm the guy who does the the the, the dirt for you. That's facts. Mm. And them and them type of situations, you gotta look at it like you can't play everybody like no little kid. Everybody ain't see thing now. Everybody ain't the old block six. You mean like you got some real demons out there? Like nigga, you finna buy me out? You mean no matter what I did, or you gonna come in with me? Shit. Sometimes you gotta make them dress for niggas to jump off that couch. You gonna snap the money? Oh wow. Hey, you gotta feed the killers, man. If you participate in a crime, bro, you gotta feed the killers, man. I'm telling you, bro. You gotta feed them all. You gotta feed them all. Woody bro. said the same thing, by the way. Woody said basically he was getting frustrated with Thug because, and it's the first time I've ever heard street dudes speak like this. They said, I'm not no crash out, and you're not gonna just leave me in jail to rot while you're just having a time of your life, you know, without, you know, me feeling like I'm adequately, you know, either cared for or whatever. That, that's kind of interesting. Now, that is insane, okay? 
Uh, it remind uh, you know what it reminds me of when Fifty Cent was speaking on Takashi Six Nine in his book. I think it was called Hustle Harder. And when Fifty Cent was speaking on Takashi, he was speaking about how Takashi had the wolves around him who were real G's, and you gotta. And the problem is, if you're not a real G yourself, you got to make sure you feed the wolves. And if you don't feed the wolves, the wolves will turn around and eat you. Okay, the same principles apply. Matter of fact, uh, I think we got a key. Say what up. I think we got a clip of um, uh, 50 reading that hustle harder. Take a listen to what 50 said when he said that. Take a listen real quick on, on um, uh, feeding the wolves. He acted wild in public, but in front of me, he was willing to be vulnerable. He was smart enough to know he was in over his head. He and I had never had conversations about what was going on. But as an experienced observer, I had a good guess where the roots of his problems lay. Your biggest issue is going to be internal, I told him. You got too many people around you, and they're not really supporting you. They're supposed to be your team, but they don't have your best interests at heart. If you don't get that situation together, it's going to be a problem. I told him this because I've been hearing he'd been switching up crews a lot. One month, he'd have a bunch of guys around him. The next month, they'd be replaced by a new crew. He was swapping crews the way some guys swap cars. Ride one for a while and trade it for another. He probably thought that was all a part of the ad, but I knew it was a serious miscalculation. When you bring people around as a rapper, there's an expectation that you provide them with opportunities. Help them get noticed as an artist themselves or get established as a behind the scenes player. Introduce them to brands they can get checks from. You only have a limited amount of time to make good on that expectation. If you don't, Infusion will set it. It will grow faster if they see you suggesting the opportunities to other people. When that happens, the original crew will start feeling disposable. You never want anyone around you feeling that way. When someone perceives themselves as disposable, any sense of loyalty will vanish. Instead of waiting for an opportunity, they're going to aggressively come after you for what they think is owed to them. They're going to extract that debt however they can. Being a smart kid, Takachi saw the value in my advice and conceded that he was in a precarious spot. He even started to make moves to replace the guys that he knew had it in for him. But it was already too late. Not long after our conversation, Takachi was arrested on federal RICO and firearm charges. In the indictment, the government even alleged that several members of his crew had plotted to kill him. I'm sure that was a scary realization for a kid who thought he was a WWF wrestler, not someone who was actually playing with life and death stakes. As I'm writing this, Takachi has just finished testifying against his own crew and was sentenced to two years behind bars. I believe one of the things that tripped up people like Takachi and Ja Rule is that they grew up on the outskirts of the hood. They weren't from the hood, but they had been exposed to it. It tricked them into thinking they were equipped to handle situations they weren't actually built for. Contrast them with someone like Drake, who isn't even from the outskirts of the hood. He's from a completely different environment. I never see Drake associating too closely with the artists he puts on. He always keeps a good deal of space between himself and whoever he's associated with at the time. He's smart enough to judge his own character and can see that there are some forces he won't be able to harness. Takachi was a great judge of what white kids wanted to listen to in order to piss off their parents. But he wasn't as good at assessing people's characters and intentions. Sadder still, I really think Takachi's a perceptive kid. If he would have slowed down and taken the time to study the people around him, get a feel for their energy, he would have realized that they weren't the right fit for him. Instead, he was in a rush. The Instagram likes and retweets were coming so fast that he probably just started to confuse social media with reality. On social media, the guy throwing up signs next to you is your man until the end. You're right or die. In real life, things are never that simple. Jealousy and envy grow very easy, especially when they start getting a taste of success. If you bring a bunch of wolves in your circle, you better be damn sure to feed them. Otherwise, it won't be long before the pack turns on you see that man it's the same it's the same principle and i and i i almost feel like 50 laid out he laid out the principles properly and you got to pay attention see that's the whole thing man the whole thing is this in this world what i've seen what i'm seeing right i, I told y'all man pray for wisdom every single day every single day pray for wisdom and god will not keep it from you right if you pray for it he will give it to you you know what i'm saying and, and you get it progressively you get it on a daily basis as uh, as needed for the day give us this day our daily bread you understand there are there is wisdom wisdom is crying out constantly to people constantly Wisdom is always reaching his hand out, okay? Wisdom wisdom is always being dropped. You just got to be able to spot it. It's like Waldo, you know what I mean? It be there. You just got to find it and you got to spot it. Be like, That's it right there. You, you follow me? 50 be dropping nuggets. He drops mad wisdom and a lot of people just ain't picking it up because a lot of times you got to be looking for it. You, you follow me? You got to be looking for it, okay?
I, can, I hear, I, look, back in the day when I was a kid, I used to be able to hear when them quarters dropped on the floor. Cause, you know what I'm saying? I was trying to play some Street Fighter 2. I knew when the quarter, when people were dropping chains and stuff like that, and you hurry up and put your foot on it. I Look, as soon as I heard the coins, my foot was already on it. I already knew where it was. Okay? And if I, look, my foot is on it, that's mine now. <laughs> you like, it's it like that. It's like that. Okay? Go ahead and drop a quarter, see what I do. Uh, now, folks are looking back, right? And they saying... Did OTF Jam give up the whole operation in his music? Now, I don't know if this is going to play, right? But but this is a, this is a, a clip that was posted, okay? Um, and take a listen to this joint. Uh, this is OTF Jam in his music, but it's like it's like he's giving all the information through the music. Take a listen to this joint real quick. Smoke is the voice you heard when he said some bullets behind it. We ain't finna tussle. Love already sitting in that chair with a hundred shot on him. Y'all know what we call him the muscle. Diddy a threat. Ain't got no pace. Whoever he catch you, that's where he gon' shoot it. Booty. The whole operation. They eat bro gave up the whole operation. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, that was just clip one. So you don't have to pl play cl clip two or three or anything like that. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, but here's the thing, man. You don't even got to go far. You, you know what the feds should do? Feds. Feds, I know y'all be listening to stuff like this. Listen up, I got a, I got an idea. Consider this, okay? Because I hate crime. I don't want crime in my neighborhood. I don't want I don't want it in my neighborhood. Period. Okay? Consider this, all right? Because we hate we hate, look, we hate crime and we hate drill music. Okay? Y'all should open up like studios, like a music studio, like a mock studio. Okay? Call it the Fudios, right? Because you the feds, all right? Fudios, and uh, like F U D I O S, and offer money and studio time to dudes who want to do drill rap. And then the artists are just gonna go in the booth, B O O F, and they're gonna tell all the details of their operations. Crime solved. You see what I'm saying? I just fixed the crime issue in the United States when it comes down to drill artists, all right? We need somebody to come through and catch all of the, the, the white collar criminals, okay? Because they shouldn't be exempt from crime neither. We shouldn't just be going after the, the, the you know what I mean? The ninjas. Oh, come on, Miguel. Damn. You know, he waited for me all day. I was writing these stories up. Soon as I start recording, Miguel want to come out here. <laughs> You're like, why is it Miguel? It's Miguel, bro. Trust me. Okay, I'm looking right at him. What you going to tell me? It ain't Miguel? <laughs> Miguel. Anyway, listen, listen. I just solved your crime problem. Okay? Uh, <laughs> look, give, a, look, give a dude a hot beat. He's telling you everything that happened in the neighborhood. Trust me. Okay? That's the problem. They're not giving enough people record deals. Okay, labels are taking too long. You know, here come damn Miguel again. Uh, now, after all of that, uh, uh, bro giving up the whole operation, um, they snapped a picture of bro in the damn interrogation room. I don't know who did this. Take a look at this picture. Hopefully, Source got the picture up of OTF Jam in the interrogation room. And they added the question, caption this. That's what I think is DJ Academic. He said, caption this. You know me. I ran straight to the comment section because comment section is where it's at. Okay? This, this is how the comments read. First comment said, whole meal gone. Them ninjas is not coming home, man. <laughs> right? Somebody else said, bro snitched on Dirk for a Big Mac and fries. I mean, I mean, you know. Somebody else said, uh, ain't no way they caught bro with the snitch burger and fries in 4K. Somebody else said, imagine giving your man 50K on a come home and he sell you out for a six piece with no beverage. Aquarius Monet said, who released this? That's what I'm saying. Y'all releasing this? This got to be AI. Y'all releasing this? Let me look at the fingers. That's what I got to do. I got to look at the damn fingers. Because the fingers will tell you everything you need to know. Somebody said, nah, this man got a whole meal. What the cuff? Somebody said, you're probably wondering how I got here. <laughs> okay. Uh, I right, love it. Somebody said, ill baby, y yo, ill baby, yo, G said, you can't do dirt with old ninjas. A ninja in his late 30s, not even trying to do 10 years. That's his entire youth gone. Uh, not going to lie, when faced with a 10, 10 wing, all flats, extra crispy from Buffalo Wild Wings, the average ninja don't stand a chance. Hey, look, man, don't do crime. I'm trying to tell y'all, man, if you're going to do crime, do it. What you, if you're going to do crime, let me give you a little, little what you call it. Give you a nugget, okay? If you're going to do dirt, right, follow what Trent said. I do my dirt all by my lonely. And chances are, you're, you're probably less likely to do dirt, okay? Because it's when you're with a crowd. When you're with a crowd of 50 ninjas, 60 ninjas, it's over. It's over for you, okay? I'm just telling you, it's over. Wait, is that my last story? Oh my gosh, that was my last story. How y'all feel about that? This was, That was my last story. That shouldn't have been my last story. 
wait, are we done? Oh my gosh, I gotta find me a story now. Okay, let me let me let me see if I can squeeze one in. Let me look. Let me see if I can squeeze one in. Okay. <laughs> uh, ladies, like, okay, just just make it fast before anybody show up. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, hold on, hold on. Don't move, don't move, don't move. Don't move. Once you move, it's over. You know that. Uh, <laughs> you're like you're so nasty. Whatever, whatever. You're nasty. Why are you thinking like that? Okay. <laughs> my bad. Uh, let me behave myself. Listen. Um. Oh. Oh. I. Uh, Wait, wait, let me do shout outs first. Let me do shout outs first. I got a couple of shout outs, then I'm gonna give you this last one with Jamie Foxx. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love, 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 shout out, shout out, shout out. Shout out and reverse shout outs. First off, Loyal Savage. Loyal Savage sent. Okay, first, let me let me just preface it like this. Yesterday, I gave a trigger list, right? Like, I like to call it a purge list. I be wanting to purge people from the channel, get rid of the wrong folk. You know what I mean? But I did a trigger list. Okay, and a lot of people were triggered by it. They did not like my list. A lot of people had some major issues with my trigger list. So you know what I'm gonna do, right? I'm gonna reiterate it. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I might add a thing or two. Okay, first off though, let me start off with Loyal Savage. Loyal Savage said this. She said, "Hey celeb," she said, "As a person, I don't condone abortion, but people fail to realize." Abortions are also used for women who have miscarriages. The procedure is called a DNC, okay? I think it's like D and C, but whatever. She said, if a woman who wished to carry a baby to term, right? But something happened between carrying and birth, a DNC is performed to remove the placenta and what is left in the womb. Yeah, my sister used to call it like tissue. She said it's a removal of tissue. And I used to be like, yo, that's crazy. You're redefining it. It's a person. And da 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 da. I used to go there. Okay. Um, and I'm not and I and I'm not saying I completely disagree with that, but let's keep it going. She said a DNC is performed to remove the placenta and what is left in a womb. She's saying I'm trying to say this as sensitively as possible. She said, as a nurse, we see this more times than people can imagine. If Trump is elected, even the parents or would have been parents, can't have that DNC and the woman will die. It isn't just women who don't want pregnancies that receive DNCs. Okay, let me, so I, I wanna make sure that I make this very clear about my stance on abortion. Not that you care, but let me just throw it out here, okay? Um, uh, when I say I hate abortion, I hate, right? What I hate is people who are irresponsible sexually, right? And it results in um, pregnancy and due to inconvenience. In other words, this baby will inconvenience my life, right? Or this baby will keep me from doing all the things I want to do. Or if I want to continue, you know, I'm saying being uh, what you would call it, like, uh, li like, li like free. This child is going to keep me from doing that. I'm against that kind of abortion. Okay. I'm, but what, what, what you're talking about is not what I'm against. I'm not against that part. Now, let me make this clear. I'm going to make this as crystal clear as possible as a God-fearing Christian who is always um, pro-life, pro-God, right? Here's my situation, okay? I don't believe... Let me, let me give you... Look, let me give you a quick rundown. You're like, oh, here we go with the story. Shut up and get the hell off the channel. It wasn't for you in the first place. Now, now that we got rid of him, okay? Listen, let me just, let me just throw this out here, all right? Uh, I, had my I had a neighbor, okay? When I moved into the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? Her and a and her husband, man, they helped me move in the house. They, she she commanded her husband to help me with, you know, move my furniture in. It was fantastic. I she used to bake me bread and all this other stuff. Wonderful woman. Wonderful woman. Okay. She got pregnant, okay? From her husband, right? And they were very happy. They had one child already, it was a daughter, and now they had his second baby is gonna be a daughter, right? But the doctor told her, if you have this child, you're gonna like you you're gonna die you stand a very strong chance of death you're gonna die if you have this baby so her and her husband had to figure out whether they would have the baby or not okay um fast forward to saturday last saturday right um that little child she had the baby right that baby 
was sticking its head through my fence talking about hey what are you doing i was like yo i'm in the backyard i'm trying to you know clear out my backyard make it look good she's like hey i'm at home i'm babysitting the other two kids or whatever yada yada and i was like yo man like you know what i'm saying i had to kick her head out the fence like yo stop peeking your head through my fence you know what i'm saying sometimes she come home she she come over to the house and stuff like that you know what i mean my people's cook them a little something to eat the whole nine yards i see the child she 12 years old right now okay uh you like what happened to the mother Oh, the mother died. See, yeah, the mother died. She, the mother said, I don't want my only daughter having, like having no sister. So I will, I am willing to die if my daughter can have a sister. And the mother, uh, uh, and then she had a conversation with her husband. They agreed that she should have the baby. She had the baby and then she died. She never came home with the baby. The baby, she never came home. You understand what I'm saying? In a situation like that, I do not believe the government should step in and force her to, to have had that baby. I think that's a conversation between her, her husband, Jesus, and the doctor. Okay? Her, her husband, Jesus, and the doctor. They should have that conversation. The government should not be forcing her to have that child. Okay? She, I think what she did was noble. I think what she did was incredible. She sacrificed her life for her child which i think is something um uh, i think it's noble i think it's honorable for a mother to do that i think it's honorable for a mother to do that but if a woman is afraid or you know what i'm saying your daughter is scared she doesn't want to quite do that i mean that's a conversation between her her doctor and what you call it okay now maybe that triggered those of y'all that are like no no it's pro-life under any circumstance let me tell you something baby Okay, in a situation like that, somebody gonna get aborted, either the mother or the baby. All right? That's what I think. Okay, either the mother's getting aborted or the or the baby's getting aborted. Okay, so in a situation like that, it is what it is. Yes, abortion kills more people than Adolf Hitler. We get it. Okay, um, if you want to abort people because you want to be irresponsible, I'm totally against that. I don't think that that should be. But in a situation like what my neighbor faced. I think that's a different circumstance. And um, and so that's that's my position on the abortion piece. Thank you, Loyal Sav Savage, for that. OK, what's my time looking like? Whatever. It's, it's, it is where it is. Um, use washing dishes anyway. Listen, uh, Marcus Billiard. OK, this this one is for Marcus Billiard. Right. My man said this is what he said to me after hearing my trigger list. He goes, don't die making the wrong statement. Source news. And then he goes, and I'm Muslim and mean what I said. That's what Marcus Billiard said. <laughs> I'm like, yo, this is very telling, man. Who, who kills to get their point across? The children of God or the children of the devil? Tell me, who kills to get their point across? He, he says, don't die making the wrong statement. And I'm Muslim. So that actually reminded me, right? It reminded me of something that Jesus said. You're like, oh boy, here we go. Okay, whatever. Okay, here's what Jesus said. The, the people were talking to Jesus. This is John chapter eight, right? They said, yo man, Jesus, our father is Abraham. Jesus said, no. If you were really children of Abraham, you'd follow his example. Instead, you're trying to kill me because I told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham never did such a thing. You're imitating your real father. They said to Jesus, man, we ain't illegitimate like you, bruh. God himself is our true father. Jesus said, if God were your father, you would love me because I came from God. I'm not here on my own. It's God that sent me. You know why you can't understand what I'm saying? Because you don't want to hear what I'm saying. Then Jesus goes like this. If God were your father, you would love me because I come from God. I'm not here on my own. Oh, wait, did I read that already? <laughs> he goes, he goes, you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning and he has always hated the truth because there's no truth in him. And when he lies, it's consistent with his character because he is a liar and the father of lies. And, and come to find out, he's the father of murderers too. He says, so when I tell you the truth, you just naturally don't believe me. Okay? Um, that's what Marcus Billiards 
comment reminded me of. He said, he said, don't die. Listen, man, uh, Marcus Billiard, I'll remember that the next time I'm swinging around Dallas, okay? Uh, Dallas, Texas. Uh, where we at over here, man? Um, oh, 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 Miss Lachey. Miss Lachey hooking us up as she always does. I do appreciate it and I love you for it. It really does mean a lot. She hit us with $5. She said, hey, Celeb, I'm back. I just want to say thank you for keeping us informed on everything and I'm loving the different personalities too. What you mean different personalities? I don't got different personalities. Sure you do. Listen, she said, keep doing great things and also my birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Miss Lachey. Was that yesterday or today? Happy birthday, okay? You definitely get a shout out. Miss Lachey's been hooking us up. Miss she, she been, look, she's been emptying her bank account looking out for your boy. A shout out to you, okay? Uh, Caesar, Caesar, Caesar Godbody said, Celeb, at 10 minutes, you triggered me. For real? He said, I took you for a person that studies things before you speak on it, but apparently the topic of Islam, you have done no studying in. Word, bro. He said, you should refrain from making foolish remarks like that. If you read the Quran, you would see that in Islam, we believe the prophet Isa, I, that's Jesus, is the physical walking words of the most high. Like if you put your hand in front of your mouth and talk the way that you can feel the words come out of your mouth, they have become flesh. So how do you regard that as just a mere prophet? The reason being is, what would the creator of everything need to pervert himself by having sex with a woman in order to make a child when he could just speak it into existence? Just like he did in, uh, 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 Jesus is not, God is not considered to have had sex with Mary, bro. So that's incorrect. That's not what the biblical scriptures teach, but let me keep reading. He said, or oh, what is in the land, or the, or the universe for the man. He said, do some research before you speak out of, or, or, of um, what the next man said when you haven't read the Quran for yourself. I hope you make this a comment on your next video. So I did, man. I did make this a comment on my next video. And I went to the, um, the ch chat GPT. I asked chat GPT just to keep it simple, right? I asked chat GPT. I said, um, I said, you know, uh, Christianity and Islam, you know what I mean? I'd be asking these questions like, you know, uh, are they similar? Where do they differ? Okay. And I'm telling you, I'm telling, listen, it says the views of Jesus and Christianity and Islam differ significantly in terms of his nature, role, and purpose. Here are the main differences. Okay. Christianity, Jesus is the son of God, fully divine being one with God as part of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit. In Islam, he is a highly, he is highly honored, but is viewed as solely a prophet, not divine. Islam strictly denies the concept of Jesus as the Son of God or as part of a Trinity. Another point, Christianity, Jesus is God incarnate, God made flesh, his birth through the Virgin Mary is seen as the fulfillment of prophecy marking God entering the world. In Islam, Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, considered a, a miraculous event, but he is not believed to be God incarnate. He is a creation of Allah, similar to Adam. That is not what Christianity teaches us. So Christianity and Islam, they go in two separate directions. It, uh, Christianity says Jesus is God. Islam says he is not. Um, and then you got his role as savior, right? You got his death and crucifixion in Christianity. Jesus is the savior of humanity in Islam. He is not seen as a savior. Okay. He is a highly honored prophet, but he's not a savior. All right. Uh, death and crucifixion. Islam denies that Jesus was crucified, believing instead that he was taken up to heaven by Allah, right? Some interpretations suggest that someone else was made to appear like him and was crucified in his place. And Islam also denies the resurrection of Jesus. Okay. And since Jesus is believed to have not died, according to Islam, there is no resurrection. It's believed that he was taken up alive and will return in the end times. Okay. And then in the end times is different. It's different all the way through. You understand what I'm saying? Islam says Jesus is going to return as a follower of Islam in the end times, but he's going to die a natural death. No, this is not what Christianity teaches. So we have two differing beliefs and I stand on my belief and you stand on your belief. And that's that. You, you follow what I'm saying? Uh, but thank you for, um, for for posting a comment. I do appreciate that. Okay. Um, what's my time looking like? Oh, yeah. The shout out section is going on, but whatever. Okay. Um, Wayne Watson says, Celeb, I think you need to change your intro to on this episode of The Purge. I know. Uh, lastly, let me give you this one. This is going to be good. Antoine Harrison. Antoine Harrison said, professing hate out of your mouth for anything is not of God. You should love your enemy. 
What are you talking about? He said, that shows me how hypocritical you are, celeb. Hate is not of God and saying such a thing comes from a corrupt heart and mind. Maybe you should read more of your Bible and give up the podcast because you can't be lukewarm with God. You got to be hot or cold or he'll throw you up out of his mouth. You're a better pa pa pastor than a podcaster. Apparently, I can't read neither. He said, or oh, you're a better sinner than half-based representation of the faith. Okay. I thought about what you said when you said hate is not of God. So I took your advice and read my Bible. This is what it says. Proverbs 6. There are six things the Lord hates. Seven are detestable to him. And he goes on and on about that. Okay. Psalm 5. It says, uh, it says, God will destroy those who speak lies and the Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. That means hate. Malachi 1. I love Jacob, but Esau, I hate it. That's Malachi 1. Malachi 2. I hate divorce, says the Lord God of Israel. Okay. Isaiah 61. I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will reward my people and make an a everlasting covenant with them. This, this one is good. Amos 5. God said, I hate, I despise your religious festivals. They're stench to me. Your assemblies are a stench to me. Okay. Uh, and then, and then let me give you this. Oh, 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 I missed one. I missed one. Here's a good one. You ready? You ready? Uh, dag, I, I lost it. I can't find it. Was, was it three? Who knows? Oh, here's a good one. The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked and those who love violence, he hates with a passion. That's Psalm 11, baby. Okay. Let me give you this last one to really make you mad. Okay. Um, he, Zechariah 8. Don't plot evil against each other and don't love to swear falsely. I hate all of this. Okay. I hate all of it. He said. This is to, for Antoine Harrison that said, hate is not of God. Okay. And told me, read my Bible. Well, I read it. What's your thoughts? Let me know. And finally... I don't know. Um, that was a that was a mild purging. Uh, where we at over here? Um, all right, look, 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 look. Jamie Fox. Let me let me just tell you what's going on with with the Jamie Fox situation. I don't think it was Jamie Fox that said this. I'm not a hundred percent sure. You like well then why are you telling it? This is gossip. It's gossip. Shut up. Listen. Uh, there are there, um. Here's the thing. Choke no joke. He said that he's already seen Jamie Fox's upcoming comedy special. Okay. Um. And then he says, Puff did something to Jamie. And Jamie ended up calling the feds on Puff. Now, I don't know if this is going to come out or not. Okay. This is according to Choke No Joke. Um, bodyguard Big Homie CC confirmed this when he was speaking with Cam Capone News. Okay. Uh, and he also claimed that the diddler poisoned, allegedly, Fox before his health scare. And that is what led Jamie Foxx to speak on him and quote unquote snitch. Um, uh, I don't know if you remember, but last year Fox suffered from what is believed to be a stroke. And um, it was a few months that he wound up in, in the hospital and rehab facilities. We was praying for him like crazy. And well, what do you know? God healed him. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to like. Be sure to subscribe. Hit us with a like if um, if you agree with our purge list. Okay. Uh, I, and, and let me know what you think about that abortion piece, man. I'm, I'm dying to know your thoughts, man. Your thoughts are more important than um, anything else that we're that. You know what I'm saying? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to like. Be sure to subscribe, especially before um, Jose makes his way back over here. <laughs> like I thought it was Miguel. No, no, no. Miguel was before. This is Jose. Um, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source. Your source. Celeb News.